In this week's video, we're going to explore how brands for decades have become so powerful, they even change our brain chemistry. Specifically, we're going to explore three main topics of how brands change our perception of reality and how this change helps create our understanding of ourselves, others and our community. With that being said, let's dive into our first perception. Have you ever wondered why we buy something from one brand and not another? This could be computers or paracetamol or jeans or trainers, but we will go out of our way to pick out one brand versus another. In the case of medicine, we know that the pills are the same. It's just the box that's different. We know that the trainers and jeans are likely all made in the same factory, yet we buy the branded pair. In behavioral economics, there is a concept known as anchoring, and a bottle of champagne is often used as a way to explain the thinking. A woman walks into a restaurant, and the waiter, seeing it's a special occasion, asks if they would like some champagne to celebrate. He doesn't mention the price initially, so her assumption is based on the atmosphere of the restaurant. She draws associations of value from the information she can see. This is now her anchor. Now, if he had said he thought the bottle was around $200, you now have a much more definitive anchor. You choose the champagne, and then when you get the bill later, you actually see that it was only worth $150. You now feel the bottle of champagne is actually cheap. Now if this had gone differently and the same bottle of champagne was initially priced at $50 and then later on the waiter comes back and apologizes saying that it's actually $100, you'd now feel that the champagne was expensive. So even though it's the same champagne and you would actually be getting it for $50 cheaper, the anchoring effect makes you feel different. And that's how branding can change our perception of value. Let's look at this in action. Now I've got a white t-shirt here. How much do you think this might cost to buy? Now if I put a logo on it, does your idea of price change? So our anchor, while not an amount of money this time, is now being created by our association of value that the logo brings to the t-shirt. Okay, let's have a look at the second perception. This time it's the perception of self. We are made up of all the decisions we make. From the day we are born, our family situation molds us into the child, teenager, and then adult we become. And along with this nurturing, we begin to form our own ideas about the world. And our opinions are expressed in what we do and what we do and do not buy. Don't believe me? Well, let's say we have these three people. They're exactly the same person. Now let's clothe them with different brands and different logos. Is our perception altered because of what they wear, what they eat, and what they own? The logos we wear provide signals to others that explain our beliefs about the world we live. A Nike t-shirt versus a Patagonia t-shirt. A Tesla against a 4x4 Jeep. A Tony's Chocolioni against Cadbury's. A remarkable notepad against a Lictrum notepad. Tesco versus Waitrose. PG Tips versus Yorkshire Tea. So while we might not feel brands play a huge part in our lives, they truly do change our perceptions of people based solely on what they wear and buy. So the final perception is around branding as a religion. If we look at the dictionary term of religion, while we might not quite reach the top description, we most definitely could argue that some brands out there elicit the actions of the other two. When Apple launched the first iPhone, people queued overnight to be the first to grab one of the phones. Who can forget the lady who unfortunately we have plans to buy hundreds of them to then be limited to one. I'm buying $100,000 worth of iPhones. And bought Mark's number one spot in line for 800 bucks. Unfortunately, we can only sell one per customer. Turns out he didn't really need it. There were three people in his party and they only wanted to buy two phones. And this type of devotion to a brand has only grown over the last few years with many using this approach in sales through scarcity as a key aspect to growing their brand through a system of faith and worship. And people are coming together during these drops to meet and to share their experience. So they are showing devotion to a brand and they have faith. They might even be considered to worship this brand. I'm not saying whether this is a good or bad thing. I'll leave that up to you. What do you think? Do let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching today. Do drop us a like and do consider subscribing. We post videos nearly every week about design, design thinking, brand, digital and strategy. Until next time, stay curious and see you in the next one.